Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec, and in this video we're going to be looking at exploiting the VS FTPD service that we discovered with our NMAP scan on Metasploitable 2. So let's go ahead and get started with it here. So after doing our NMAP version scan, we found out that the version of VS FTP running on Metasploitable is 2.3.4. So one of the first things that you'll want to do is um, you could just do a Google search to see if there are any public exploits available for it. There is a known exploit for this uh, specific version of VSFTP. Uh, you can find the uh, detailed info on it on ExploitDB. <clears throat> you can actually see the source code for the Meta Metasploit module and inside that source code it will give you a description of what the vulnerability is for this version of VSFTP. So basically what it is, somebody compromised the source packages for VSFTP and they placed a backdoor in the software so anybody who in, had installed that specific version of the package would become vulnerable to the exploit and it basically works by sending special characters in uh, for the username and it will cause it to spawn uh, port 6200 and then you can run system commands on it from there. We're going to first attempt to exploit it using Metasploit uh, and then after we get this one done uh, we're going to look at doing a manual exploitation of the same vulnerability. All right, so we're going to be using Metasploit in this first section to uh, exploit the vulnerability. So Metasploit uses PostgreSQL uh, for its database. So we need to make sure first that the uh, PostgreSQL service is running. So just open a terminal window, type in service PostgreSQL start hit enter and then we can verify that the service started if we just do a quick net stat tack antp and then just grep for uh, it should be on port 5432 and we can see there that it has started so I'm gonna go ahead and clear this now to launch Metasploit, if you're not familiar with it, um, all you need to do at the prompt here is just type in MSF console, hit enter, and it will take you just a minute to launch here. If you've never used Metasploit before, you may want to look at some other tutorials first. Uh, just so that you become familiar with it. Um, Vivek Ramachandran, who is uh, the creator of the Security Tube website, he has created an excellent series, a video series on Metasploit. It, he goes over every detail about how to, how to run it. So check out Security Tube and just look for his Metasploit tutorial. All right, so we've got Metasploit launched here. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, just a quick search to see if Metasploit contains any exploits for VSFTP. So we'll just do a search VSFTP and hit enter. And we see that it's got one exploit and it happens to be for that exact version that's running on Metasploitable. And the, the you can see the rank there is excellent. So in order to use this exploit, we're going to type in use exploit unix ftp and you can do tab completion within Metasploit. So once you get that typed in, just hit enter. And you can see that the command prompt has now changed to show that that's the exploit that it's set to use. So now we, we need to know which options need to be set for this exploit. So if you type in show options, hit enter, and it looks like this one only has a couple of options that need to be set, and the only thing we need to set is the R host option. It already has the correct port number set. So we'll do set 
our host and then put in the IP address of your Metasploitable machine. Hit enter. And once you've got that set, then we'll just do exploit. And it looks like it was successful. It came back and said we've got a command shell open. Uh, you're not going to see anything necessarily for a prompt, but if you t start typing in commands, you should get re responses back. So let's do a uname A. And you can see we do have a access to the Metasploitable machine that the exploit was successful. So one of the things that you would do at this point is uh, since we do have root access, then we've got full control of this machine. So you would want to start going through the machine looking for, uh, you know, files, uh, spreadsheets, anything like that that they may have that would be considered confidential data maybe. Uh, look at configuration files that may give you information about um, other devices on the network. Uh, one of the uh, files that you'll want to look at is the ETC shadow file so we can get the usernames and the shadow passwords that are uh, that are on this box so if we do a cat Etsy shadow hit enter and you can see with root access that we're able to read this entire file so you've got the root account uh, sys klog and here you see the msf admin account and the password hash for it so this is good for us as attackers. We can copy these hashes out and with the usernames and then um, crack the passwords from there to see if we can maybe use these accounts then to log on to other machines on the network. Now in working with hashes, uh, when you work with some of the password cracking programs, some of them require you to specify what type of password hash is that you're giving it. Uh, there is a tool within Kali called Hash Identifier that you can use to try to figure out what type of hash is being used in the shadow file here. So if we open a new terminal window and to launch Hash Identifier, you just type that at the prompt. So it's Hash TAC Identifier. Hit Enter. The program launches so if we come back here to the shadow file and we'll just do uh, the hash for MSF admin and copy this hash make sure you go up to the colon here copy and come back to hash identifier and then paste that hash in and then just hit enter here and so it comes back and tells you that it thinks it's an MD5 Unix hash so we can use this information then to feed that into our uh, password cracker. All right, for this demo, we're going to use the GUI version of John the Ripper, uh, and it's called Johnny. I'm going to go ahead and close this hash identifier window. We'll come up to Applications, Password Attacks, and then click on Johnny here, and it should launch the GUI window. Just move this to the side for a second. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you need to create a file that contains the username and the hash. So you'll copy the MSF admin and just keep it all on one line like it is in, in the uh, shadow file. I've already created a file here on the desktop. I'll open it up here and let you see what it looks like. But I copied it just like it was in the shadow file. Is you need to feed this file now into Johnny if you just go and click on open password file select the file that you created and you can see that it's loaded the username and the password hash here uh, there shouldn't be any other options that we need to set at this point it Johnny will automatically try to detect the hash type that it is so from here, if we just go up and click on Start Attack, and you can see it's already found the password of MSF Admin.
So that returned the result pretty quickly. Um, I wouldn't expect that, especially if you uh, create a file that's got several passwords and, or I'm sorry, several usernames and password hashes. Depending on how complex the password is, it could take a long time to try to crack these. So just don't expect the recovery of the password to be as fast as this one. It was just one account and it happened to be using the uh, the password was the same as what the username was, which is one of the checks that it will look at. All right, so we were able to exploit the Metasploitable VM using Metasploit. So now we're going to take a look at doing that same exploit, only this time we're going to be doing it manually. And we'll do this just so you can see how a manual exploitation would work, just in case you may go on a test at some point and you're not allowed to use Metasploit on a, on a client's network. So if you understand how the exploit works, it may be that you can just manually exploit it without having to worry about using a tool on it. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, just open another terminal window and we're just going to make an FTP connection to the Metasploitable machine. So we'll do FTP 168.56.102. All right, so here the exploit works by the special characters that get sent in. All you need to do here is type in uh, just a random letter. So I'm just going to type in A, followed by a colon, and then a right parenthesis. So it, you can see it makes a smiley face. You'll hit enter and then just hit enter again for the password and you can see at this point the cursor is just going to sit there and blink and, and the, it's not going to show anything else here in this window if we go and open another terminal window and then we make a let's make a netcat connection to metasploitable on port 6200 which is the port that the uh, back door opens up on the victim machine so we'll do a netcat uh, attack vvn 192.168.56.102 port 6200 I'll hit enter and it says there that the port is open so now if we try to type in uh, shell commands we'll see if we get any responses back so I'll just do an ID root okay that's good so now let's do a uname tack a and we can see that it came back with the metasploitable banner so the manual exploit is pretty easy to do and you can see how how serious this vulnerability was uh, it it wasn't out there very long uh, it was discovered pretty quickly and they took it down so the mitigation, if you happen to be running uh, this version of VSFTP, uh, just up, upgrade it to whatever the latest version is. So now you can see we were able to exploit the Metasploitable machine using both Metasploit and doing a manual exploitation against it. Uh, the good thing about this exploit was it, it gave us root access. So as an attacker, if you have root on a machine, the, you know, you've got full control of it. You can continue enumerating that machine at that point. Uh, you could also use that machine to maybe pivot to other machines on the network. And then you can take the, uh, us any usernames and passwords that you're able to gather on from this machine and be able to log into other machines on the network and continue, uh, continue your attack from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.